Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to make a form so you can track your expenses on your when you're on your phone or you can just have a little form that you fill out on your computer, whatever you like, but basically we're just making a simple uh, form to fill out so that that gets written to a spreadsheet so that way you can track your expenses for your taxes throughout the year. And we'll get started. We're here in Gmail. Uh, we're in the mail section as you can see where it says Gmail right here. We're going to move over here to apps, click on that, go to drive. Once we're in drive, we're going to click create and we're going to choose form. Here are some themes. The default one is probably the least offensive. Uh, for a sample that you'll see later, I ended up choosing this note paper one, so we'll go ahead and go with that one just for consistency. I'm also going to change the title here to expenses and we're going to click OK. So you can see the form is here and it's it's ready to go. We're going to start filling it out. First we're going to ignore our form settings because we don't need to, to worry about that. Here's your title. We're going to ignore the form description because we don't need it. Now when you're out and about buying something the first thing you're going to be thinking of in terms of a statement is I bought X for this amount. For example, I brought I bought a paintbrush for twenty dollars, and then we then you'll think about the category after that. So the first thing we're going to do is say amount, and that is the name of this first question. We're going to ignore help text. If we put it in there, it'll help explain what it is, but it's really just going to clutter up the form. Amount should be pretty descriptive. We're going to change from multiple choice to text. Next, we're going to go to Advanced Settings. We're going to say Data Validation. We're not going to change anything here. We're basically just locking this into a number. And we're going to say that one is done. We're going to add an item. The next one is going to be Categories. We're going to change this one to Choose from a List. And next, we're going to make some categories. So we have supplies, travel, food, and one more. So we have a nice list. Now you're going to have a lot more categories in this. Consult your tax professional on which categories you'll want. I am by no means an expert. So that you're on your own for that. Oh, uh, one more thing. We're going to mark this as a required question. Because without the categories and also without the amount, we'll change that in a second. Without the, without the categories, it really doesn't matter. We'll click done on this. We're going to go back and edit this. To edit it, all you have to do is um, mouse over the area and click on it and it opens back up. We're going to change this to a required question. And you can see on here that red asterisk shows up. Um, it'll show up on this as soon as we collapse it. But for now, we're going to add another item. Our final item is comments. And we're going to make that a paragraph text so that way if you have a long explanation of just what you were doing at the strip club and you think you can get away with that, then this is the place to put it. And done. And so here's our little form. So confirmation page down here. This is what you see when you have filled it out and it comes back and says your response has been recorded. That's boring, so I'm going to change that to win because we all like to be winners. Down here we have show link to submit another response. This is important because you want to be able to fill out your form, submit it, and then have the form ready to go again. So we're going to keep it as it is. The next thing we're going to do is choose a default um, response destination. This is where we choose that it's going to write to a spreadsheet. We're going to say it's going to a new spreadsheet. We're going to delete this responses because we know what that is. We're not going to always create a, a new spreadsheet because what that means is that every time you logged an expense, it would make its own spreadsheet, which would be really awful at the end of the year. So we're going to, here we are, new spreadsheet, expenses, create. And you can see up here, it's setting up the spreadsheet. 
Now it's changed to view responses. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this. We'll go up here to view live form. And when this comes up, you can see this is our ridiculous theme. We're going to say we bought a paintbrush for $20.99. And it is supplies and Dick Blick sale. And now we're going to say submit. You can see here we've got our win. That shows that it successfully went. We're going to submit another response because after we bought our fancy paintbrush, we took a cab to the art opening that cost $50, and that was travel. Let me say cab to art opening and submit. And now that we've put two responses in, we're going to check to make sure it went to the spreadsheet. I've closed the tab where we were testing the form, and now we're going to go up and check to make sure that uh, the form that we were filling out actually made it into the spreadsheet. We're going to go up here to view responses, click on that. Here you can see we have a timestamp column, an amount column, your categories that you put in, and then your comments. And you can see that your timestamp is automatically logged. If you remember, we didn't put that in as one of the items that you need to fill out, which is great because that is annoying to fill out. What you can do, however, if you are like me and waited until April 9th to start putting in receipts and taking care of that, then you can go in and um, double click this and change the date and like say we actually bought that brush on the 4th of March. Next, we need to mail this to ourselves so that way we can access it on our iPhones or whatever sort of smartphone you'd like to use. We're going to go to send form right over here, click it, and you can see there's a link you can copy and paste and send yourself or whatever. I wouldn't recommend sharing it because this is your personal stuff. What uh, I'm going to do is send it to myself at this fancy email address I made for this screencast and we're going to send it and then I'm going to get out of here and go to my email in order to do that you click up here on this corner and this brings you to drive right here and we're going to go to Gmail and you can see here's the email you just sent yourself uh, we're gonna open it this is the this is the link that will take you to where you need to go you can fill it out in here I guess it'll be kind of klutzy what I do or have been doing today is opening this email on my iPhone in Gmail and then um, clicking the link and then it takes me to Safari and then I can fill out the form there and I just keep that open on my Safari I don't close it out every time so that way it, it's just always there after that I want to show you what it looks like on my phone so I've taken some screenshots of, of what I was doing previously today, so some of the information is a little bit different. Unfortunately, Google is not very good at figuring out responsiveness for mobile stuff so far. So all the text here is pretty tiny, but I think that you should be able to work around it because fortunately there's a lot of vertical space. Here's the first shot you see where you've got your amount, category, and then comment, and then submit. Over here, I'm showing where you've clicked, you've filled out the amount, you've clicked on the category, you can see the categories down here where you're selecting your categories. Over here, I added this because this is what happens when you hit submit, and again with the responsiveness, it's not, it's making it super tiny, but fortunately you can zoom in and you can see here is your, the name of your form again, your congratulations, you win this time message and then submit another response. Now I know that there are a lot of apps out there. The one that was mentioned most on Facebook when we were discussing this was Expensely and um, I'm certainly going to check into that because I was thinking it was mostly for smaller businesses that had employees that needed to submit expenses. However, what is good about this is this would be great for if you need to do something like you're hanging some artwork at a show and you're not sure how much wall space you have so you bring different kinds of uh, paintings and then you hang up what you need and then you could you could make you could have made a form for yourself that says like painting and then price you put on there and then that way you can kind of track the inventory you left behind 
Anyway, thanks guys. I hope that helps.